Hello and welcome back to our Stealth AI series. As I said in the first episode, we're going to start work on our character and their movement and they can do the sneak around the map past enemies uh, before we start working on the enemies themselves. So previously we set up the crouching um, input and animation. And what we're going to do in this episode is start work on the prone animation. If you don't know what that is, it's basically when you lie down on the floor. So the way we're going to handle this input is going to be uh, how we use the crouch, but this time rather than just pushing the button, if you hold it down, it would then trigger the prone. So we need to do a, a bit of code to calculate how long you actually hold down the button for. So for this, we're going to go into our third person character. Now previously, we set up the input action event for crouch slash prone. And that goes into pressed and does the crouching. Okay, so this is the crouch code. And to make that a bit easier to identify, I'm just going to separate out the event and select what's remaining and just push the C key on the keyboard and it'll put a comment around it. And I'm just going to call this one crouch. So now I can drag the whole lot around a lot easier. Next, um, we're going to work on uh, the prone. So the way that works is we also need to set up an axis event. So at the moment, this is an action event. We now need an axis event to do the same thing. So go to Edit, Project Settings, and in the left-hand side column, find the Input option. And then you'll find Action Mappings, where we put our crouch prone. And we're now going to go into Axis Mappings, and I'm going to add a new one here and call this one Prone. And that key is going to be whatever key I've selected for this one. So here I've used left shift. So this one will also be left shift. And there we go. We close that. So why an axis mapping? Well, an axis mapping is like a tick. It is constantly firing off. What changes is the, the axis value based on the input being pushed. So if I was to add the prone event, you can see here it comes with an axis value. That value is going to change to uh, from 0 to 1 when I push the left shift key. But as I said, it's like a tick. It's constantly happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed that into a gate. Now, a gate is, uh, kind of does what it says it does. So a gate has an entrance and an exit, but you can close and open the gate based on some other events. So this gate... It's constantly going to be entered by this input axis prone. What's not going to happen though is the opening and closing of it. So it starts closed by default. To open it, we're going to use this action event. So let's just move this up here. And I'm going to put the input action event pressed into open and released into close. So whilst you're holding down the button, this gate is open which is very useful when you want to calculate when something is being held down. So then we're going to go right click an empty space and get the player controller because we need to determine when the player controller has held this button down. So from there, we're going to drag that out and just type in the word time. And you want the one that says get input key time down. Choose that one and you can see it's asking for a key. We can plug in the key from our input action into it. So now it's going to look at that key that's being pushed and output the float for how long it's being held down. And remember, this is like a tick now. It's just outputting all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to check what this value is. And if it's above a certain value, we're going to set it to go prone. If it's below a certain value, we're going to go crouched. So from return value here, we're going to do is greater than. And we're going to put in a value of 1. So if I hold it down for one second, it's going to go prone. So let's put that in a branch. So true should go to prone and false should go to crouch. And to show you that, let's do a print string here. And let's put in go into prone. Now with that done, a uh, quick explanation of what's going to happen here. Because this is a tick and this is going to be held open whilst we are holding down the key, this tick is actually going to fire off loads of times. So therefore the animation is going to get like stuttery and, uh, and never actually resolve itself maybe. So we need to tell it to basically only do these ones once, the result once. So what we're going to do here is when we 
go to true here we do a do once and we're going to do the same thing for false here and then the reset here is going to be controlled by a new custom event so we're going to do a custom event and we'll do uh, crouch released and that will be plugged into the resets so we'll do one there and then we'll actually sorry we could do a sequence first sequence so then zero goes to there and then then one goes to here and let's just organize ourselves a bit here and just reposition that a little bit try to organize it as best i can uh, so it compile and that's that done then we have to actually call this custom uh, event here the crouch released and that's going to happen on this released key here so i'm just going to drag this out a little bit here and just put in the crouch released event that we just made and that will now trigger both of those off hit compile and that's it so let's test that out so if i left shift here I go into crouch and I'll uncrouch. If I hold down left shift, I crouch and then I go into prone. So it will sequence into prone. And if I tap it again, I'll stand up. Same if I were to hold it again, it'll just stand up as well. So what we're gonna do in the next episode is add the animation for our prone character going in. So if you wanna watch the next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can watch all my videos before anyone else from just a donation of just one dollar. Big thank you to all my patrons and all my YouTube members for their continued support in my channel and me. Thank you again so so much. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have ever any suggestions or comments that you want to leave behind, leave a comment below and I'll check them out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.